So we're here at BlizzCon 2015 with Mike Denae and Jason Chase to talk about League of Explorers, the next Hearthstone uh, adventure. Uh, the big mechanic in it is Discover, where you get to pick from three cards, random cards, uh, kind of like the Hunter tracking ability. Um, was that something where you wanted to give players access to more card draw, but you didn't want them to have like decks which are more consistent by drawing the cards they, they knew they'd picked? Is that, the, is that the secret plan? That's really insightful. Uh, one of the things that I like to say is, when you have more cards in your hand, you have more options. Having more options makes the game more fun. So we want to give you more options. And at the same time, we ran into the problem of if you see every card in your deck, the games feel the same, so it's not very fun. So with the new Discover mechanic, we win in a couple different ways. First of all, you get the more interesting hands and the more interesting play situations. But on top of that, you also get the other advantages of Discover, which is like if you're playing against a certain style of deck, like a rush deck, you'll choose the healing or defensive cards. and maybe the cheaper cards. And if you're playing as a slow control deck, you'll take the bigger cards. So there's a lot of different things that are advantageous with Discover. Here's a less insightful question. Are Murlocs back now? Is this it? Is this the second the second age of the Murloc? Uh, that's a good question. We did Sir Finley Murgleton, the guy who lets you discover a new hero power. We did Any Fin Can Happen, and Every Fin Is Awesome. So there's a lot of new Murloc options out there. Uh, we tried it. Sometimes it was awesome. So we'll have to let, let people try it out themselves and see. I'm, I hope so. It's a fun deck to play. Sometimes everything wasn't awesome. <laughs> Sometimes you didn't get to turn 10. Okay. I, I think you'll see some Murloc decks out there. I think, I think they'll know what's coming out. Let, let's talk a little bit about Sir Finley then. He's a, he's a one mana, one three. Replace yeah. your hero power with another one of the basic hero powers. Yeah. That, I, I think, and I've made predictions that have been wrong before, but he strikes me as one of the most powerful one drops in the game, potentially. He is very good. There's other, been other 1-3 minions in the game, like 1-3 Taunt, and uh, there's a Warrior card. It's a 1-3 that gets plus one attack when it's enraged. And some of them get played a lot, some of them get played a little. So 1-3 is a space we're exploring a bit more. We think we can do more in that. Placing your hero power is not always good. Like if you build your deck around, say, the Warrior hero power, and you've got Shield Slams, you don't really want to replace that hero power. But, all right, hypothetically, I play a lot of Druid, but I, I don't like to hero power a lot as Druid. But say I get Life Tap, that's mm -hmm. going to be pretty amazing, right? Because I can afford to lose a bit of health to draw cards. And you had to, in the past, give Warlock all these dumpster cards because you knew that it was too good. They were too, they were too able to draw their decks, right? Right. So everyone's going to pick Life Tap, aren't they? In testing, has everyone picked Life Tap? Uh, it's a bit more complicated than that. If you build your deck to have really cheap cards so that you can empty your hand and refill it with Life Tap, then you can take advantage of Life Tap. But if you build your deck like that, and you don't get life tap, or you don't draw Sir Finley, then you've just built your deck with uh, a bunch of cheap cards, and you're just going to run out of gas. So uh, it really depends on the situation. Sometimes I'll play that, and I'll be like, oh, I'm playing as Face Hunter. I'm going to want to take a heal or an armor card. So it's actually a lot more interesting than it first appears. Uh, sometimes you do take life tap if it's like later in the game, and your hand's running out of cards. So it's a very dynamic choice. And we, in fact, took life tap a lot less than I expected because you just don't build your deck around life tap. So can you tell me what the most chosen power is? Um, the mage one was used a lot. The paladin one was probably the most chosen okay. one. Just having extra minions consistently was a good choice. Um, yeah, it really did depend, though, on the situation. Talk to me a bit about the golden monkey, because that got a big reaction when it was announced on stage. This is a card where you play the legendary Elise Starseeker, she shuffles a map into your deck, then you get the map and you play the map, and then the, the, the golden monkey's in your, your deck, and then maybe you play the monkey. All your cards, both on the board and in your hand, become legendaries. That's yeah. exciting, but isn't it also terrible? Like, you could build a legendary deck now, people have done, mm -hmm. and they're bad. One of the challenges with the current legendary deck is you don't have enough cheap cards to play on turn one to five to keep you alive to establish board. Imagine if you could play all cheap cards and then know later in the game your whole deck's going to get replaced with legendary, so you'll have also infinite late game. It's like the perfect mix of best of both worlds. But, it's, but I might have like Ancient of War down and suddenly he's Blood Mage Thanos. Uh, it doesn't no. change your stuff it's, in it's play. Not, it's only your hand oh, only the hand and the... And your deck. Yeah. All right, so that's less of a, that's yeah, less exactly. of a problem. It was interesting playing the, uh, I, I tried the Temple Escape a few times um, and it felt like, uh, like as Ben mentioned, it was a very unique way to play Hearthstone in a similar way to you, you had the Tavern Brawl this week where it was, again, something we hadn't seen before. Is a lot of the stuff in um, the new adventure like that in that it's got kind of like actually unique mechanics rather than what we've seen from adventures in the past where it's like bosses with unusual abilities essentially? You know, we've got some new things to different degrees. Um, the third mission, the first wing, the one you played is a good example of that. We have a mission in the second wing that's a good example of that. The other missions aren't quite as crazy, 
but they, they still push in sort of different directions, sort of more subtle directions that are new and interesting. What was the reason for wanting to contract it down to four weeks, like four wings, uh, and also to have like more cards than before? You just just trying to be nice and give us more stuff? Or? Uh, I mean, we kind of really designed the wings and how many cards are based around each individual adventure. And so as we kind of figured out what's the, the lore behind the, the League of Explorers and uh, what are the various uh, parts of the story we want to tell and what role does Reno play versus Finley versus Elise and uh, how is Bran kind of pulling everything together. That's kind of what really drove the design of the overall structure. In terms of the number of cards, yeah, I mean, it, we're, we're still kind of, um, even though we're now into year uh, two since launch of Hearthstone, we're still trying new things and still, exp still experimenting. That's really important to uh, the way we're approaching the game. That's kind of why one of the things we really try to do with Tavern Brawl, to your previous question, just there's a lot of really cool ideas out there. and We want to have a chance to uh, try different things and sort of see how they go. So that's also part of just how we got to the number of cards that are being rolled out. There are way more class cards this time with uh, League of Explorers than there have been in previous adventures as well. So very excited to hear how players respond to that. So Shaman and Rogue getting a bit of love in, in this set. Talk to me a bit about those classes and what you felt like they needed and what you tried to sort of bring to them. Sure, one of the things we did with the Rogue is we gave them a more uh, creature focused options. And this is the first time they didn't get a spell at all. They just got three creatures. And each of those creatures is pushed pretty far and sort of links into other cards they already have. Rogue got a 3-4 for 3 with a special ability. It, it copies a death rattle of a minion you control. So you have to build around that. You put other good death rattles in. Maybe you get your Sylvanas, but maybe not. You have to put one of your other death rattles and copy it. So there's a lot of really good deck building and sort of thinking there. And the other Rogue cards are also pretty good, and I think um, Rogues will build into that. We still think that spell, spell-based Rogues is a fun direction to go, and we're going to keep supporting that in the future but we want to give them some good minions for now. Uh, Shaman also got some very strong cards. People talk a lot about Overload, so we give him a very strong Overload minion, the 1-3 Trog. He's great, and uh, I think that both classes will spend some time exploring and building good stuff. I also think uh, with the change to Warsong Commander, Shaman will start doing better and Rogue will start doing better because those decks are held a bit in check. And we see um, in the World Championships, for example, all, eight, all nine classes are being represented by different players. So um, Pimping Ho's Shaman deck uses uh, some TGT cards to good effect, and he's got a nice Totem Shaman deck, and I think that'll show up more and more as people see these decks do well. Um, yeah. Let's talk about another six mana card from the, to the current game. Do read of you willing to admit that you regret printing Mysterious Challenger? Um, one thing that we heard a lot from players in the past is, hey, these Paladin Secrets are bad. No one ever plays them. No one will ever play them. Why don't you buff them? Uh, we haven't heard that recently. So it's our fault. <laughs> so we made cards. We always make cards that make other cards more interesting or better and more playable. Uh, and this is one of those examples where we put it out there, you know, people are experimenting with it. People are finding, oh, this is a pretty good deck. Um, a couple of weeks ago, the deck to beat was Warsong Commander. And everyone was building decks that were really good in Warsong Commander. It's no longer the deck to beat. So I think what we'll see over the next couple of weeks is people building decks to beat Mysterious Challenger. And I don't know if they'll succeed or not, but I'm sure that things will change as they do that. With where we are today, you're right, it is, it is for sure a strong card and a strong deck. Um, but you know, I think it just kind of speaks to generally like kind of where we are with this phase of the meta, and we're looking forward to seeing that change again as Lee comes out. You, you think there are cards within the 45 that have been revealed that, that are going to provide quite strong answers then to Because I don't know if I saw that necessarily out of the ones. Maybe I missed something. Well, I mean, I think it's one of the things where, you know, we're, in a, it, we're definitely going to see a big disruption to the meta for sure, and we'll actually see how, what comes out of that in the course of the, uh, the days to come. But I'm, I'm going to stick with it just for a second, that's yeah. An, that's an interesting question. I don't think that the cards in League of Explorers are specifically answers, but if other decks improve in power level, like Mysterious Challenger is not actually that much better. It's a little bit better than the decks around it. Um, and if, all, if some of those decks get good or a new deck appears that's good, then it'll be on par with the Mysterious Challenger. And if people start putting more cards into their deck, like recently someone added Pyromancers to his Priest Dragon deck, and that made it start beating Mysterious Challenger. And it's just like little tweaks like that, where they, they put a couple cards different in their decks, then they improve against the meta. Um, I don't know how much you were following the World Championships, but Tice brought a really good uh, list of decks. He beat, brought three decks that are good against aggro, and specifically good decks that are good against Mysterious Challenger. He brought Freeze Mage, he brought Dragon Priest, uh, and he brought Warsong Commander deck without the Warsong Commanders. Yeah. Right? And those are all really good against Mysterious Challenger, and he's been doing very well so far in World Championships. He's top eight, and he's already won his first match today. So I think uh, people have tools, and when they see the results of the World Championships and these new decks, 
they'll start getting inspired by that and try those out. Plus the new cards that are coming out you know, any week, they'll try those out. So I think the playing field is still wide open. I, I want to stick with it a second just because I think it is something that's being really debated because it's, it's easy for like guys like me to come to interviews like this and always complain about whatever what is perceived to be the most powerful deck. Yeah. But I want to go back to like something Firebat, who won the World Championships last year, said, where he was talking about like post the nerf to War Song, how that was a combo deck which was perceived to have a pretty high skill ceiling. And I think like personally, I found like playing like higher up the ladder, like I was okay losing to it. Maybe other people weren't. I think the issue with Mysterious Challenger is, and this was the point he made, is that you basically just throw it in with a bundle of other cards that are super high value and plop them down. Like it's a really, really easy strategy to execute. And you, can, of course, you can beat it. Like no, no deck has like probably better than a kind of 50, 60 percent win rate, right? But it feels, I think, very unsatisfying to play against. Um. Be because of that, like you play Minibot, you play Muster. They even play Zombie Chow. Like these are all like in their class, pretty much the highest value things and then you, when you've got a car when you've got a car which people are keeping on the mulligan yeah. as a six drop mm. that's surely an issue well, I think it, so real quick so one thing i'd say about that is i mean it, it is for sure a strong deck and there's no question that yeah i mean the mysterious challenge deck shield and minibot the zombie chow kind of that that, that ramp is is a strong combination of cards um but just to speak to that point like we're not uh, against having combo decks. I mean, it actually yeah. is something that we think is good for the game to have combo decks. What we are worried about are particular combo decks where it just leads to a play state that we just don't think is interactive and is not fun. So that was the reason behind where we changed the Warson Commander and that led to the change of the Grim Patron deck. We are happy to see there are Grim Patron decks around that are still being played. Um, but ultimately, that's, that's a kind of important point, I think, is just that we agree that combo decks are good for the game. There are we, we want to make sure we continue to support them. We just don't want them to get to that state where they're uh, just not fun to play with or against. We um, we obviously write about Hearthstone a lot on our uh, pro channel on PC Gamer, and you'll always get like kind of one or two people come into the comments and say, "Well, it's just a game of luck anyway. Like it's ridiculous that you're writing taking this game so seriously." And kind of gets kind of uh, it can get like weary to try and sort of like defend against. When you're kind of looking at the data from Hearthstone and you're obviously watching people up and down the ladder, what do you think are the, what do you notice is the kind of the changes in play style from say like rank 20 through up to then you're at 10 or 5 and legend. Can you like see people playing differently when you're kind of looking at it from that big kind of top down level? That's a good question from Mike. Yeah, we, we have a lot of data that shows the different uh, levels of players and we look at them for different reasons. Sometimes you look at to see, you know, is it the same? Like, should we make changes based on the high level or not? Um, and we learn a lot of things. One of the things that we learn is a lot of people keep playing mage after at the high levels because that's the first deck they're introduced to, right? And the other things that we learn are like, once people start people start copying decks from the internet and playing those fairly quickly, even at you know ranks 15 to 20, people are very often playing the same decks that people uh, at legend rank are playing. Uh, more so than we expect, originally expected. The deck construction is important and choosing which deck you want to play and exactly what cards you put in down to like what little tech cards you put in is really important. We think that obviously the play skill is super important uh, and seeing the same players do well over and over again kind of reinforces how valuable that is. Um, and they also become sort of celebrities in their own way, right, by winning a lot. Um, and luck, it's a factor of the game and it's not there to determine who wins, it's there to make the game more fun, fun to play, fun to watch, more replayable. Um, also to put you in situations where you have to think think about the odds. Like when you're playing poker, you're thinking, okay, uh, you know, I know he could have this or this or this, and these cards are visible and these are not. And you have a lot of calculations and math. Similar in Hearthstone, you're like, okay, he could do this, this or this, and right, the odds, you know, are 40% this and 60% this, and being able to calculate those odds and knowing the different options in a situation is really important. Uh, and the best players will get all those things into consideration.